Uh-huh. This side is definitely swollen. Does it hurt when you swallow? No. Mom, I'm sorry you mentioned it. Honey, you're letting in too much air. I'm going to go over the air. Don't talk. Well, how's the patient? She's got something. One of her glands is swollen. <laughs> Well, I don't know what you were saying, but I'll defend to the death your right to say it. I'll bet a million dollars it isn't one point over 98.2. It's 99.8. Pay up. Ha uh ha. -huh. You have to stay home today, young lady. Mom, I can't stay home. I'm sorry, dear. There are just too many things going around. I'm going to call the doctor. Oh, Mom, 99.8 isn't even a temperature. You'll laugh. Mom, maybe I'm just more warm-blooded than the average person. <laughs> Disaster. I can't afford to miss school today, Popo. You got a test? No, but I have a dramatic club rehearsal and a, and a meeting with a dance committee at lunchtime, and somewhere I've got to squeeze in my debating team partner. And that's all? Yeah, except for the jazz concert Richard's going to take me to tonight. So you see, Popo, I just can't afford to miss school today. Please explain that to Mom. Well, your mother would be a lot more sympathetic if you were worried about missing history, math, and English. Papa, I don't have to worry about history, math, and English. They'll still be there when I get back. <laughs> Meet Kathy, who lived most everywhere. From Zanzibar to Berkeley Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But The ballet ruse and crepe Suzette. Our patty on to rock and roll. The hot dog makes her lose control. And what a wild duet. Still the cousins. Identical cousins. Then you'll find. They laugh alike. They walk alike. At times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind. When cousins. some television? Oh, you know what the doctor said, dear. You're to stay in bed until he gets here. Oh, that won't be until this afternoon. Well, that's when he makes his house calls, if there's no emergency. Well, if you'll excuse me, honey, I've got a lot to do. Mom? Yes? Could I have a cheese sandwich? After the big breakfast you had? That was over an hour ago. All right. Mom? If you wouldn't mind another pillow, please. Oh, sure. Thanks, Mom. You're an angel of mercy. Mom, you may as well go all the way. Why don't you make one of those great grilled cheese sandwiches with ham and tomato and a little Worcestershire sauce. You know those special ones? And some milk, naturally. Naturally? <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, some olives. Is that all? Oh, yeah. I don't want to be in any trouble, Mom. <laughs> Mom! Yes? I forgot to ask you something! What is it? I don't want to yell. It might hurt my throat. <laughs> okay, I'm coming. Mom, do you think it would be all right if I used the phone? I really think it would be better if you just rested. And besides, who are you going to call, dear? Everybody's in school. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you're right. If you'll excuse me, honey, I really have got an awful lot to do. I know. Why don't you take my temperature again? I really don't think it's necessary. I know. I'll take my pulse. Do that. <laughs> oh, no! Patty! What is it? My nail is chipped. Mom, would you get me the nail file, please? <laughs> Why don't you make some phone calls? 
But you said nobody would be home. <gasps> Doris Hartley's home with a broken leg. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, hello, Mrs. Hartley. This is Pat. May I talk to Doris, please? In school? What about a broken leg? Oh, yeah, I guess two months is plenty of time for a broken leg to heal. Uh, so, uh, what's new, Mrs. Hartley? The house must seem pretty empty without Doris around, huh? I got you out of where? Oh, well, uh, you better put something on, you'll catch your death of cold, and then the house really will be empty. Well? <laughs> Boy, what a grout. <laughs> High school? Is this the secretary? Hi. I wonder if you'd do me a very large favor. Is the absentee list made up yet? Oh, good. Would you read it to me? Uh, uh, no particular reason. I just want to see who's available for some phone calls. Me, uh, I am a, uh, let's just say I'm a community-minded citizen who makes a hobby out of calling shut-ins. <laughs> You're not allowed to give out students' phone numbers? I'll tell you what. Why don't you give me the numbers without the names? Hello? Well, something nice. Natalie? See, so what's been going on around there? I've been trying to reach you for an hour. I let Patty make some phone calls just to occupy herself. Well, who's she been calling? Aren't all her friends in school? Did you ever hear of the classified phone book? She's been poring over it like it was the book of the month club selection. In other words, she's feeling pretty good. She's fine. Now ask me how I am. Well, you were the one who insisted that she stay home. Yeah. Honey, I haven't got any more time to talk to you. I've been trying to get the breakfast dishes done for the last three hours. But thanks for calling. It's, uh, it's good to talk to somebody without climbing the stairs. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Yes. Can I get up for a minute just to get something for my dresser? Can't it wait until I get there? No, it's vitally important. I'll be up in a minute. electric clock. Why? Because it only says five after eleven. Well, that's the right time. What'd you want? My makeup tray inside. Boy, time certainly drags when you're home in bed. It certainly does. Mom, could I have some tissues over there? I thought we blew a fuse. Not yet. <laughs> oh, I, I guess I'll need my pencil sharpener for my eyebrow pencil. It's right there on the desk. Oh, and Mom, could I have the mirror over there on the dresser? Thank you. What's all this for? Well, I have to do something to keep me from going wiggy. Mom, are you sure we can't get the doctor here any earlier? I told you, he just doesn't consider this an emergency. That lot he knows. Mom? There's no rush about the apple. Anytime you happen to be coming back upstairs. I have a feeling it'll be soon. <laughs> Here's your apple, dear, and I brought a few other things for the rest of the afternoon, so I won't be... What are you doing covered up? <laughs> what have you done to yourself? It's the newest look. The magazine says it's going to be very big this year. Where? In Hong Kong? <laughs> look, this article says makeup can uncover your secret self. What do you think? I think you should put the cover back on. I'll get you a washcloth. I think you're beautiful. <laughs> all right, honey, here's a washcloth. Now get all that stuff off. All for one and one for all. <laughs> Just trying to 
trying to keep my mind occupied. <laughs> well, I don't suppose you'd consider doing a little schoolwork. In my condition? <laughs> Scrub up. The bill will be. Hi, honey. Uh, no, 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 you're not interrupting. I just wanted to get your advice, Martin. Do you think it would be all right if Bob Holton came over to visit Patty? He's the president of the Dramatic Club. Well, I really don't know. It's just that she's anxious to find out what happened at the rehearsal, and frankly, I don't know what to say. What do you think? Why don't you check the doctor? He already left the office. She seems in very good spirits. And frankly, I'd welcome anything that would occupy her. Well... Well, I just wanted to get your opinion. Thanks, dear. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> well, how'd it go? Well, what can I tell you, Patty? Without you, the rehearsal was a shambles, an absolute shambles. Oh, gee, that's too bad. Oh, try to get those kids quiet. I'm president of the club, and I'm playing the king. And they still wouldn't listen to me. Now, how can you do a play like St. Joan with everybody horsing around? Let's face it. Nobody can keep those kids as quiet as you can. Well, Bob... Nobody can yell as loud as you can. <laughs> I have to watch my voice. Well, soon, Patty. I'm fine. Really fine. Those are glazed fruits. <gasps> glazed fruits? Just what I love. You want one? Hate him. Oh. How about some uh, nuts or stuffed dates or fruit or, or candy? No, thanks. Mm. What's in that box? <gasps> Forgot. It's the St. Joan wig. Oh. I want you to try it on. Okay. You should have heard Gloria Peterson reading your part. <laughs> <laughs> it was really something else. Was he really that bad? Listen, you know in the play where I say, preposterous that this frail little girl should leave the armies of France. Yeah. It was preposterous, all right. She's two feet taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't move. Don't move. What is it, a bee? You are she. Who? You are St. Joan. <laughs> Listen, do you feel up to a little rehearsing? I feel fine. Now, why don't we do the scene where the king comes to visit Joan in her cell? Good idea. We haven't gotten to the meat of that scene yet. I think we've gotten to the ham. <laughs> Please be serious. Yeah, sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, I start, right? King flatters me by his presence. Wait a minute. Flatter. Give me a chance to get into the mood. I can't become a cruel tyrant like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a bitter old man. Old before my time. Life. Life is cruel. I'm unloved. Despised. Not well liked. What play is that? <laughs> well, you broke the mood. I'm sorry. All right. Well, that's the cell door. I'm just coming in. <laughs> you are the king. The king of France. Even if you are bitter and old. Hated and despised by friend and foe alike. But why are you hated and despised? Because you're rotten. Because you're cruel. Because you treat everybody. Because they're too hard for gold. Aren't you Bob? Bob? <laughs> Bob, I think you went in the wrong cell. <laughs> Who's that? Bob. He's my leading man in the play. Where'd he go? At the front door. Hey, do you think you'll be okay without a keeper? <laughs> ho, ho, ho. What do you want? Freddie Marshall's here, and in case you don't feel well enough to see him, he sent these up. And just after dinner, Mints. Of course I feel well enough to see him. I have to talk to him about that speech for the debate. 
Hello? I got it, Mom. Oh, hi, Emma. How'd it go? Oh, you need my opinion, huh? Well, look, Freddy's here now, and Bob just left, and I doubt if he'll ever be back. Uh, why don't you come by, and we'll talk about the dance committee in about a half hour. Okay. Bye. Tell Freddy you can go back. You want one? One! <laughs> Dear, I just want to warn you, the doctor called. He'll be here at 4 o'clock. Gee, Mama, I don't think I can work a minute till 4.30. <laughs> and so I say to you, ladies and gentlemen, that my worthy opponents have utterly and completely failed to show us why the voting age should not be lowered. We of the affirmative, however, have amply demonstrated that today's teenager is fully equipped. Uh, to take his or her place in the national scene. Yeah. And in conclusion, let me just say this. We teenagers are tired of being future citizens. We want to contribute here and now and not in the hereafter. I thank you. <laughs> hey, th that speech is great, Freddie. Thanks. Uh, now, what about your speech? Uh, I'm working on it. Oh, you better get cracking. The debate's Monday. Hey, uh, do you think you'll be all right by then? I'm fine now, Freddie. The only reason I stayed home was because my mother insisted. Nat? Oh, oh, what is all this? What are you doing home so early? Well, you called and said Patty was giving you such a rough time. I thought maybe I'd come home and help, but... Uh... It's like a congressman's lobby. What are all these kids doing here? Oh, they're waiting to see Patty. Uh, that's Bob. He's the president of the Dramatic Society. Uh, that's the dance committee. Uh, Richard, you know, uh, the girl he's talking to is Gloria Peterson. There's a man on the phone. The doctor. The doctor? You mean you let Patty keep him waiting? Of course not. He had to call his office. I was just going to go up and tell Patty that he's here and to get rid of Freddie. Freddie? Debating team. Natalie, I don't understand you. I mean, how can you let all these kids come here when Patty is sick? I asked you, and you said it was okay. Well, you mentioned one, not a whole congregation. Here, put that in the refrigerator, would you? What is it? That's some ice cream for Patty. I'm going up and clear out her room. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, girls. Uh, pardon me, I'm coming through. Excuse me, fellas, I just live here. <laughs> For the road? Mm, no, thanks. I really got to get going. Besides, it's too close to dinner. Dinner? It's funny. I'm not even hungry. So, uh, do you want me to tell the dance committee to come on up? Nope. Hi, Papa. This is Freddie Marshall. He was just leaving. I know he is. When you get downstairs, tell the rest of the group that visiting hours are over. Oh, but Papa, I haven't seen the dance committee yet. And Richard's here, and I hear Bob got back, and Gloria Peterson. Boy, is she going to be disappointed. Yeah, well, I'm afraid the doctor takes precedence over all of them. Oh, is he here already? Yeah, I'm just going to bring him right up. Papa? You want a chocolate covered pretzel? Lemonade? I'm a loyal subject of the king. Are you friend or foe? Are you with Joan? No, I live here. <laughs> How long is Patty going to be tied up? Until the doctor leaves, I guess. Stand aside! I must take my leave. <laughs> okay. But you better stop by the gas station and have them tighten your bolts. Well, you must be a very popular young lady to judge from the number of visitors down there. That's when she's homesick. You can imagine what it's like around here when she's well. How's her pulse? Perfectly normal for a girl her age. Of course it's normal. I bet my temperature's normal, too. Patty. Hmm. Has it gone up? No, down. It's normal. See? Can I get up and get dressed? As far as I'm concerned, you can. You see, that's what we need in the world. More doctors like you. <laughs> Mom, would you have... serious. I mean, she doesn't even have a temperature. And I say she has. But you heard the doctor. Martin, I felt her forehead. Are you going to compare a thermometer with a mother's hands? And risk being called un-American? Certainly not. <laughs> I guess I might as well forget about Patty going to the jazz concert tonight with me, huh? Oh, I'm afraid so, yeah. Poor Patty. She used to love jazz. 
If you'd like to run on along home, I'll be happy to phone you later. You mean you're throwing me out? No, you can stay if you want to. Well, I sure would like to hear the doctor's verdict. Well? What is it? The worst case of the sweets I've seen in a long time. <laughs> you turn that candy store back into a bedroom and she'll be fine. Thank you very much, Doctor. I'll take care of that right away. You're welcome. Care for a chocolate-covered pretzel? <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Richard? Yeah? I want you to do me a favor. You name it. I want you to go to that jazz concert tonight with somebody else. Oh, nothing doing. Please, Richard. You can't tie yourself down to me. Richard, I'd feel much better if I thought you were having a good time. Well, what kind of a good time can I have without you? I might as well tear these tickets no, up. No, wait. Uh, you sure you don't want to go without me? I'm positive. Besides, who can I get at this late hour? Um, how about Gloria Peterson? Patty, in the first place, she's too tall. And in the second place... Yes. You break my arm. You better believe it. <laughs> There's only one girl I'm sure would be free now. And that's Dusty Higgins' kid sister. Well, I guess she'd get a big kick out of going with me. There. She sounds perfect. Why don't you take her? Well, I don't know, Patty. Richard, I insist. But, Patty, I... Please, Richard. I must rest now. Oh, sure. You know, I finally understand what Joan means when she says in the play, only through our own suffering can we know the suffering of others. Do you understand? Yeah. But I don't think the concert's going to be that bad. <laughs> I'm glad that you told Richard to go to that concert with somebody else. That was very generous of you. That's okay, Papa. I didn't see any point in wasting two good tickets. And Dusty Higgins' little sister will have a great time. You know, I'll bet it's her first date with a grown man. Grown man? <laughs> Believe me, Papa, to a kid, Richard's a grown man. You know, I can still remember my first date with an older man. Up until then, I guess I had been to two Saturday movies with a boy. And one day... Out of the clear blue sky, Jack Nordstrom called and asked me to go to the museum. He was ancient. Must have been 15. <laughs> I almost fell off my shoes. Patty, Richard's here. He forgot the ticket. That clunk. <laughs> oh, there they are. Would you give them to him, Papa? Yeah. Thank you. I'd forget my head if it wasn't tacked on. You said it. I didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry, Patty, uh, but I gotta go. Where's Dusty's kid sister? Uh, she's waiting in the car. Oh, why don't you bring her up? I'm dying to meet her. Well, I, uh, I know, Patty. You know how embarrassed uh, she is. I mean, uh, knowing that you're my girlfriend and, well, you know that whole story. She must be excited, huh? Well, you can, uh, you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I better get back to the car. Richard? 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 She must be calling you because my name's Patty. Huh? huh? Open the door, Richard. The door? Oh, yeah, the door. Yeah? You forgot my present for Patty. Oh. Uh, she uh, didn't know she brought you some candy. Well, I've got to split. Richard, where are your manners? Ask her to come in. Patty, it's getting late. That's ridiculous. Come on in. Hi. Patty, I would like you to meet Eve, Dusty's kid sister. Eve, I would like you to meet Patty, my friend. Eve, I'd like you to meet Richard, the rat. What a crazy pair, but they're cousins. Identical cousins, and you find. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. I wonder if
if you'd do me a very large favor. Is the absentee list made up yet? Oh, good. Would you read it to me? Uh, no particular reason. I just want to see who's available for some phone calls. Me, uh, I am a... Let's just say I'm a community-minded citizen who makes a hobby out of calling shut-ins. <laughs> You're not allowed to give out students' phone numbers? I'll tell you what. Why don't you give me the numbers without the names? Hello? <laughs> something nice. Natalie? So what's been going on around there? I've been trying to reach you for an hour. I let Patty make some phone calls just to occupy herself. Well, who's she been calling? Aren't all her friends in school? Did you ever hear of the classified phone book? She's been poring over it like it was the book of the month club selection. <laughs> in other words, she's feeling pretty good. She's fine. Now ask me how I am. Well, you were the one who insisted that she stay home. <laughs> yeah. Honey, I haven't got any more time to talk to you. I've been trying to get the breakfast dishes done for the last three hours. But thanks for calling. It's, uh, it's good to talk to somebody without climbing the stairs. <laughs> Bye, dear. Goodbye. Mom! Yes? Can I get up for a minute just to get the limb of my dresser? Can't it wait until I get there? No, it's vitally important. I'll be up in a minute. electric clock. Why? Because it only says five after 11. Well, that's the right time. What do you want? My makeup tray inside. Elder cousin, identical cousin, stand you by. They laugh alike, they walk alike, at times they even talk alike. You can lose your mind when cousins are two of a kind. some television? Oh, you know what the doctor said, dear. You're to stay in bed until he gets here. Well, that won't be until this afternoon. Well, that's when he makes his house calls, if there's no emergency. Well, if you'll excuse me, honey, I've got a lot to do. Mom? Yes? Could I have a cheese sandwich? After the big breakfast you had? That was over an hour ago. All right. Mom? If you wouldn't mind another pillow, please. Oh, sure. Thanks, Mom. You're an angel of mercy. Mom, you may as well go all the way. Why don't you make one of those great grilled cheese sandwiches with ham and tomato and a little Worcestershire sauce? You know those special ones? And some milk, naturally. Naturally? <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, some olives. Is that all? Oh, yeah. I don't want to be in any trouble, Mom. <laughs> Mom! Yes? I forgot to ask you something! What is it? I don't want to yell, it might hurt my throat! <laughs> okay, I'm coming. Boy, time certainly drags when you're home in bed. It certainly does. Mom, can I have some tissues over there? I thought we blew a fuse. Not yet. <laughs> oh, I, I guess I'll need my pencil sharpener for my eyebrow pencil. It's right there on the desk. Oh, and Mom, could I have the mirror over there on the dresser? <laughs> Thank you. What's all this for? Well, I have to do something to keep me from going wiggy. Mom, are you sure we can't get the doctor here any earlier? I told you, he just doesn't consider this an emergency. That lot he knows. <laughs> Mom? There's no rush about the apple. Any time you happen to be coming back upstairs. I have a feeling it'll be soon. <laughs> Here's your apple, dear, and I brought a few other things for the rest of the afternoon, so I won't be... What are you 
What are you doing covered up? <laughs> what have you done to yourself? It's the newest look. The magazine says it's going to be very big this year. Where, in Hong Kong? <laughs> look, this article says makeup can uncover your secret self. What do you think? I think you should put the cover back on. I'll get you a washcloth. Oh, I think you're beautiful. <laughs> All right, honey, here's a washcloth. Now get all that stuff up. All for one and one for all. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep my mind occupied. <laughs> Mom, do you think it would be all right if I used the phone? I really think it would be better if you just rested. And besides, who are you going to call, dear? Everybody's in school. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you're right. If you'll excuse me, honey, I really have got an awful lot to do. I know. Why don't you take my temperature again? I really don't think it's necessary. I know. I'll take my pulse. Do that. <laughs> oh, no! Patty! What is it? My nail is chipped. Mom, would you get me the nail file, please? <laughs> Why don't you make some phone calls? But you said nobody'd be home. <gasps> Doris Hartley's home with a broken leg. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, hello, Mrs. Hartley. This is Pat. May I talk to Doris, please? In school? What about a broken leg? Oh, yeah, I guess two months is plenty of time for a broken leg to heal. Uh, so, uh, what's new, Mrs. Hartley? Yeah, the house must seem pretty empty without Doris around, huh? I got you out of where? Oh, well, uh, you better put something on, you'll catch your death of cold, and then the house really will be empty. Hello? <laughs> Boy, what a grout. <laughs> Is this the secretary? Hi. Uh-huh. This site is definitely swollen. Does it hurt when you swallow? No. Mom, I'm sorry you mentioned it. Honey, you're letting in too much air. Oh, how can I tell when I'm in the air? <laughs> well, how's the patient? She's got something. One of her glands is swollen. <laughs> Well, I don't know what you were saying, but I'll defend to the death you're right to say it. I'll bet a million dollars it isn't one point over 98.2. It's 99.8. Pay up. Ha uh ha. -huh. You have to stay home today, young lady. Mom, I can't stay home. I'm sorry, dear. There are just too many things going around. I'm going to call the doctor. Oh, Mom, 99.8 isn't even a temperature. You'll laugh. Mom, maybe I'm just more warm-blooded than the average person. <laughs> I can't afford to miss school today, Popo. You got a test? No, but I have a dramatic club rehearsal and, and a meeting with a dance committee at lunchtime, and somewhere I've got to squeeze in my debating team partner. And that's all? Yeah, except for the jazz concert Richard's going to take me to tonight. So you see, Popo, I just can't afford to miss school today. Please explain that to Mom. Well, your mother'd be a lot more sympathetic if you were worried about missing history, math, and English. Papa, I don't have to worry about history, math, and English. They'll still be there when I get back. <laughs> Meet Kathy, who lived most everywhere. From Zanzibar to Barclay Square. But Patty's only seen the sights a girl can see from Brooklyn Heights. What a crazy pair. But them cousins, identical cousins all the way. One pair of matching bookends, different as night and day. Where Kathy adores a minute, 
the ballet ruse and crepe Suzette. Our patty on the rock and roll, a hot dog makes her lose control. And what a wild duet! Steve! 